Hi, this is Ted Cantu for HotMetroFinds.com, and this morning we are going to look at what happened at the REM show at Chrysler Arena, Ann Arbor, 1987. I'm taking you all the way back to this historic concert that really kicked open the doors to something that we all know today as alternative radio. What really kind of brought this project into fruition is I found a list of songs that were supposed to be performed at that show. I was at that show, actually. The DBs opened, and uh, it was IRS Records uh, basically put this program, this show together. It was a major tour because a lot of different things came into play. Document was uh, one of two albums that came out from IRS Records, and uh, they're both IRM, uh, REM releases. The second one was Dead Letter Office. And this had a bunch of songs in it from the Velvet Underground, Television, Aerosmith, Wire. So this is before the web, and um, it was really kind of like an art director's dream to see this kind of thing happen. And they, REM actually got on the cover of Rolling Stone, and it was a big deal. It was a really, really big deal. Um, also, that in 87, it's important to remember this, 20 years prior, Andy Warhol and the Velvet Underground actually came to uh, Hill Auditorium, and they performed the, with the Exploding Plastic Inevitable. It was Andy Warhol's show that he was doing in New York City at the Dom, and they went on tour with this thing. It was a multi-sensory projection, art, music, fusion sound of the Velvets, and, uh, and of course, lots of drug taking, but the, the kids on, uh, the U of M kids, of course, were pretty clean compared to the art crowd of New York. And there was a lot of confusion as to what the show was supposed to do, what it was supposed to produce. People actually walked out. They were very confused by the show. And Andy Warhol himself didn't really participate in the show. He actually sat up in the projection booth signing autographs, uh, autographing posters and other memorabilia, meeting his fans. And people just w wandered around Hill Auditorium. Some danced on the stage and some didn't participate at all. Uh, some hung out in the hallway, and uh, it was a very strange show. So that sort of large projection, you know, the, the large theatrical screen, the projection, the the actual um, images, the the artistic intent, you know, of, of the show itself, was was really kind of um, disconnected. Twenty years later, REM kind of does a homage to that that style of show and brings it to Ann Arbor once again, only this time two miles up the road at Chrysler Arena. And that show was strictly a concert. I mean, there was no, there was no dancing on the stage. There was no, none of that. It was a strictly an artistic concert experience. And what was interesting about the show was the projections were pretty amazing. Uh, it was mostly black and white footage, filmmaking, you know, the mechanical stuff and it was edited to a video and that video was projected onto a large screen behind the band now this did two things the show actually ushered a new style of of uh, you know artistic integrity and uh, large screen projections which are still being done today uh, in every single musical category whether it be hip-hop rock metal it's all being done today that's the first thing it did and, and it kind of goes back to the Andy Warhol style originally. And then the second thing that it did was it had to actually usher in a new style of alternative sound, underground sound, garage sound, if you will, because 87, we didn't even know what alternative was. It was most of the garage type sound, underground, to the, the modern mainstream and also influence a new generation of people. And, um, and, and by doing so, it also kicked open the, 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 the radio formats. Uh, which was cluttered with bands like Mr. Mister, Aha, Bruce Springsteen, Hart, um, just, you know, stuff that it was selling, but uh, as a youth growing up at the time, I was very bored with it. I didn't, I didn't I identify with any of this stuff, so REM opened the doors to that. And after they came to Ann Arbor in 87, 
that's when the bands came in. They all toppled in like dominoes. We saw the replacements, uh, Who's Could Do, it was the Dead Milkmen, Echo and the Bunnymen, uh, I mean, it was Red Hot Chili Peppers, and the list goes on. I think X came around that time, and uh, there was a resurgence of what was taken off in, in the UK punk scene. The Buzzcocks actually went back on the road, and The Damned, uh, just two years later. So it was really, it was really amazing. And after that, uh, the radio stations started to play a lot of these songs on the radio. And um, there was a new movement after that because REM actually left IRS Records and went to Warner Brothers. And uh, MTV put them in, you know, more rotation. Back when MTV played music. So you had all these different bands coming, and it inspired a brand new generation of free-thinking people on the mainstream front that actually made more alternative type sounds like the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, you had really great uh, bands like, um, you know, They Might Be Giants, uh, Brooke Big around that time. And also I think it was, um, you know, Sonic Youth and stuff. There was that really great time when, when it, that window of creativity that was open. Right before Nirvana came, there was like this really influx of creative, you know, creative bands and, and artistic integrity. And that was really, really cool. So I just want to tell you that's what the article's about. It, it's a pretty good read. And um, back to the set list. I, I came across the set list. There's a couple songs on here that, now I'm not saying they, they, they didn't do it, but it, it just seems to me that uh, I don't remember these songs being played. Pop Song 89 was one of the songs that made it on the list. And it was also, I believe it was, um, Pop Song 89 was another one that pops up on here too. Orange Crush was another one. Uh, that came up the Green Album. I don't believe those songs were played when we saw them play live. I also don't think there was three encores. I remember that show being very, very short. And, and for whatever reason, uh, it was very, it was kind of like, um, I wish the show was actually longer. And there wasn't a lot of songs played from the, the previous albums, like um, uh, Fables of the Reconstruction. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't played, uh, some of those songs. And I was disappointed. So the more popular songs that we had was basically, you know, the one I love, uh, Superman, and... Uh, finest work song was the song that kicked it all off. The other stuff was kind of weird and quirky, and it wasn't really radio friendly. So whoever put that list together, I, I got to wonder if they were even at the show, because it doesn't, it doesn't I, I don't recognize it. Anyway, that's that's my take on it. But um, go ahead, check it out, Hot Metro Finds. We've got some other stuff going on there, too. We've got... Uh, some great film reviews coming. There's a nice piece coming out on uh, on Lou Reed, a little tribute for Lou Reed and the Velvets. I kind of, you know, draw the bridge between R.E.M. and the Velvets. And there's some other things there, too, related towards art and culture. So do check us out, hotmetrofines.com. This is Ted Cantu talking to you, and uh, hope to see you online. Thanks.